this is uh, quite a bit different this week with what we're learning. So everything's been about events, 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 events. But mm -hmm. this one is about ideas, which is kind of, kind of, oh, that's a little different. Kind of different. That'll be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to cover period from 1890 to 1910, mm. part of the post-emancipation reconstruction era. And we're going to look at some key figures during this period and their conflicting ideas. And the reason um, this came up in the Yale course is because these ideas are still being debated now, you know, 100 years later. Because there's a lot of, there's always been a lot of uh, disagreement about um, with black leaders as to how, what kind of uh, strategies they should be using and stuff like that. So we're going we're gonna to get into a little bit of that today. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And here's something interesting. Uh, there's one. Um, there's one question where I I wanted to ask it because it's important, but it just doesn't come up. Doesn't come up in any Google search at all. So mm. we made it a light, lightning round, <laughs> which is a new thing. So question four is a lightning round. So when you get to question four, don't even bother Googling. Just click the answer as fast as you can. It's double the points. Double points. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> points comes out of you quick. So don't, and I tried to make the answer obvious because you can't, you can't Google. So it's kind of like a race. So that's question four. And we got, we got this awesome, awesome cup of bomber swag. We got all this stuff in here. So that's the prize. Yeah, and some, some jet swag in here. This was donated by Aaron. Yay. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. Hey, Jen. She's just fighting with the computer there. Mm -hmm. So I sent everyone the, the link to the quiz in Twitter. Yes. Uh, I know that's better for Uncle Lyle because... Uh, it did work. I have it. He zoom on his phone so he doesn't have to go back and forth. So um, let me just pop over to the quiz. And ooh, ooh. trying to do something different with my computer here. Ah, oh, here we go. Quiz. Yeah. So I'm logged in. Can you see me? Now we can see you. Yep. Yes, we can see you. We saw a picture before, which is good. And now you're live, which is good too. What mm -hmm. the heck? Yeah. All right. Um, are we all ready to go? I'm ready. If I believe so. Okay. I, I need to send you the link, right? Um, you can put it in the Zoom chat if anyone needs it. I, I, I sent it on Twitter uh, to Uncle Lyle because that works better because he uses two gadgets. Oh, okay. And the thing, so. I made it real easy. Uh, you're you. already in, right? Oh. There it is. All right. So Uncle Lyle, I changed something. Uh, you don't have to click submit anymore. <laughs> when you click an answer, it's going to be submitted immediately. So because you were uh, uh, you were losing points there, you're clicking the right answer, but you weren't clicking the second thing. And uh, you know that other thing, Jen, where you have to click start the question. I yes. Have to turn it off. So as soon as you click next question, it's going to be live. So. That'll, that'll go a lot to, a little smoother. Okay, but right. I have active question one now. Yeah, yeah, so as soon as you start the quiz, it's gonna, gonna be live and you know all, all those problems we're having where everyone was going click, click, hey, it's not, Jan, it's not letting me click, it's not letting me click. Well, that, uh, that won't happen this time because I, I fixed that. Okay. I, I, I tested it last, uh, two days ago. Uh, is everyone in Crowdper? Or is I showed everyone not in Crowdper, I should say. Has everyone got, got themselves logged in? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we can start then whenever Jen's ready. Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, the first question, what period of African American history does this unit cover? The years between 1890 and 1910, part of the post-emancipation reconstruction area. B, what's a unit? C, I don't know. D, when COVID's over, I want to try Jen Swineapple. Mm -hmm. ah. Well, thanks. It's delicious. 
We have three votes. Yeah. So as soon as you click next, the next question will go live, which is uh, a lot, lot better. Okay. So, uh, um, Everyone so obviously. Yep. Okay. Question two. Whose anti-lynching anti journalism prompted death threats, which caused him or her to flee Memphis for Chicago and go on to co-found the NAACP? Was it W.E.B. Dubois, Booker T. Washington, Anna J. Cooper, or Ida B. Wells? We got two, Jen. How many answers? Me. How many answers do we have? I have one. Okay, people are still Google them. That's good. Mm -hmm. Once we've got our three in, I want to talk about uh, question two for a bit. Okay. <laughs> this is our prize. It's from Aaron. And it's full of them. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> the answers yet? Again, do we have two answers? There we go. What's that? Do we have two answers yet? Wait, yeah, we have two answers now. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> Okay, so um, it's a little bit about Ida D. Well, Ida D. Wells. Uh, there's a guy named Thomas Moore, who is a friend of hers. This is kind of what got her, got her um, kicked out of Memphis. Uh, he opened a store called the People's Jewel Grocery, and that store competed with uh, a white-owned grocery store. Uh, so uh, Thomas Moss defied the threats to close her house, and then he was lynched. And, uh, that prompted all the body to to start a reaction when she crusade and they were gonna string her up too, but she had to she left for Chicago. There's a lot of uh, talk about uh, uh, black people not being civilized, right? And she would she'd get right to the point and say, Look, what you're doing is barbaric. You was the lynchers, right? This is barbaric. So they don't talk about being civilized. Um, that's anyone else uh, Read anything on Google when they're answering. Okay. Want us to know? I read through. I read through your PDF. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm ready for question three. Is anyone else? Everyone else? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Oh, I'm struggling here. Hang on a second. Okay, every I've got a serious lag, so oh no problem. Okay, I'm clicking question three now. Yep, I see it. <laughs> <clears throat> Who headed up the American Baptist Home Mission Society and coined the term talented tent? Was it William B. Johnson, Henry Lyman Morehouse, Booker T. Washington, or Absalom Jones? Hmm. And let me know when we have two answers.
I don't have one yet. Oh, people are, people are thinking. Oh, now I have one. Yep. I have two. Okay. Um, so a um, little bit about uh, Moorhose. Uh, the right answer is Moorhose. There's a college named after him, and uh, lots of black American uh, leaders went there, including um, Martin Luther King Jr. And a host of other names that uh, hopefully we'll, we'll learn more about. So um, this um, Baptist guy was a big believer in the uplift ideology. <laughs> And it's the idea that uh, freed slaves need to learn to behave respectfully, like they're not civilized and they need to become civilized. And the lead among them need to kind of up uplift the rest of their race out of, uh, you know, from uh, being barbarians to being civilized. It's kind of a, anyway, that was the idea at the time. It's, uh, people don't really think that way anymore. Uh, so, and, uh, this Baptist Home Mission Society was uh, being led by this guy. So they had, it was steeped in this ideology and they had a lot of similar problems to what we had in, uh, uh, up here in Canada with uh, residential schools, except for the you know, mm -hmm. state the genocide and all that, but the whole uh, system about uh, destroying your culture because your culture is uncivilized is, is part of that, that whole idea. Uh, okay, so that said, I'm gonna vote uh, for Moorhouse. And don't click four yet. Question four is a lightning round. So everybody get, get ready, get your finger ready. because You got to answer quick. Okay, don't Google this one because the answer's not on Google, but we're ready for uh, question four as soon as Jen comes back. <laughs> Do you see that she's kind of frozen? Yeah. We got a, a ghost of Jen. <laughs> and it looks like we've got Lyle, just his picture. <laughs> Oh boy, can you hear me, Aaron? I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, my bad. Okay. Uh, what is she for my own? Okay. Did we lose Lyle? Uh, no, we lost Jen, but Jen's back now. <laughs> Okay. You ready? Yeah, for the lightning round. We sure are. <laughs> okay, here we go. What organization was started by Southern Blacks in response to being shut out of leadership by the American Baptist Home Mission Society? Was it Westboro Baptist Church, the Church of England, National Baptist Convention, or Ukrainian Orthodox Church of America? And there have been two votes. Uh-oh. I guess we did lose Lyle. <laughs> I can hear you, but I can't see you. That's all. Okay. Uh, you got to vote before the time's up here. <laughs> this is double point. I think I voted. That's working. Okay. I just can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay. So, um, it's a little can bit. Can you see me on the screen, or did you lose my camera? Oh, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Okay, I'm not going to play with it. Yeah, that's fine. It's just a picture. Yeah, it's just fine. So I think we have a really bad, really bad connection tonight overall. Yeah. I it's touched my phone and it died. So the fact that I still have voice is good. If I touch it again, I'll lose connection. Okay, don't touch it. Did you guys like the Tampa Bay Lightning in the lightning round? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so a little bit about the National Baptist Convention. Um, oh, actually, no. Yeah, just uh, a little bit about why this is important. Because a church in that period was more than just a house of worship. There were uh, religious and secular spaces, because uh, that's where you would go for your education um, and healthcare as well. So it's, it was a bigger, bigger deal back then when it would have been there. Oh, and if you're in need of food and clothing, that you'd go there for that too. Okay, question five. Five. Uh, 
Whitlock leader championed Morehouse's uplift ideology, leading the Niagara movement, which became the NAACP. Was it A.W. Uh, sorry, was it W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, Thurgood Marshall, or Harriet Tubman? Mm -hmm. oh. We have two votes. Oh, okay, I'll vote two. Um, I think I know the answer because I put this in last night. Okay, that would be Du Bois. Uh, yeah, it's pr pronounced Du Bois. It's hard to hard to say it that way though, because everyone else who uses that name is Du Bois. It's pronounced Du Bois. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I wanted to phone you so we could, <laughs> okay. Wait, it it rhymes with Joyce, at the, but uh, no, no bad. It's not bad to get that wrong. Okay, uh, do you want to show the scores, or should we get right to question six? I can show the rankings. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, oh! I'm beating Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> this is close though. Look at that. 390 to 412. 314. It was a light yeah. one, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Already. Okay. Ready for six? Question six is Which black leader called for black progress through education and entrepreneurship, even at the expense of pursuing equal rights? and built up the Tuskegee Institute. Was it Madam C.J. Walker, Thurgood Marshall, Booker T. Washington, or Harriet Tubman? I was confusing Booker T. Washington with Booker T. Jones because I really like Booker T. Jones's music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll have to look into that. Uh, Booker G. Yeah, I was going to play the keyboard, I think. Mm -hmm. Booker T. and the MGs? It's one yes, of my favorites. Uh, yeah. Wonder why he named himself Booker T. Well, maybe it was after this black leader. Do we have two answers in, in yet, Jen? We do. Uh, yes, I just checked. We have two. Sorry. So um, it's, a, it's Booker T. Washington. Uh, that's the answer. So a little uh, bit about him um, and uh, Du Bois as well. So. They disagreed about which course of action should be taken, especially <coughs> over the something called the Atlanta Compromise. And that was a um, strategic agreement that Booker T and his co coalition of black leaders made with the Southern white leadership. Uh, they agreed not to retaliate against racist behavior. Uh, they agreed to tolerate segregation and they agreed to uh, tolerate discrimination. But in, in that, in exchange for that, they got uh, free basic vocational education. Um, now, Du Bois disagreed with that pretty strongly, and he considered that uh, accommodation. Um, Booker T started the Tuskegee Institute, uh, like it says in the question. That was um, a vocational school in the heart of Alabama's white farming land. So he was trying to um, provide skilled farm labor. And Du Bois is more of a high thinker in the guy, right? So he, he founded something called the ANA, the American uh, Negro, Negro Academy. And that's, their lofty goal was to develop the next generation of leaders to solve America's racial ills. So, so you got a think tank uh, versus hey, look at that. vocational school. So different um, ways of going about things, I guess. Okay, so I'll, I'll answer. And anyone uh, read anything they want to share about I put something in Facebook tonight about uh, the whole um, two schools of thought on how, how they how they should have proceeded. So uh, mm -hmm. that describes it okay. pretty well. All right, seven and eight. 
Question seven. Which black leader had no issues with the Plessy v. Ferguson ruling? Ah. Um, du Bois, who felt blacks right to sit anywhere they wish must be recognized. Washington, who could accommodate separate areas for black riders, provided they were as comfortable as the white riders. That's right, Booker T. Washington. <laughs> Good job, Jen, on saying Du Bois. Last question. You unlearned that pretty quick. All right. Um, I'm ready for eight if everyone else is. But if anyone else has something to say about seven, I'd love to. Ready for the last question? Yep. Yep. Sure, why not? Okay, here we go. Which leading black feminist leader taught math at Dunbar High School and wrote A Voice from the South? Was it Anna J. Cooper, Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin, Mary Church Terrell, or Francis E. W. Harper? All right, well, that would be um, Anna J. Cooper. <laughs> so I should vote for Anna J. Cooper or answer that. <laughs> yeah, so she was a leading black, black feminist theorist of her day. Uh, the Dunbar High School that she taught at was a um, breeding ground for black intellectual elite, like the people who would be into Du Bois camp. Um, yeah, people. So that's uh, something to look into. And that's eight questions, eh? So we might have a winner. What's the, what's the standings, Jen? Who? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Oh, thank God for Google. <laughs> all right. We'll have to DM me your address and I'll mail all this out. So we got... Uh, <laughs> Bomber cups and cup holders. We got uh, the uh, We Are Winnipeg shot glass. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go with the white white logo. 
there's like yeah, a, whiskey for the shot glass. Yeah, whiskey for the shot glass. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Unless they're playing the Jets, I'll I'll uh, drink it. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how much time do we have? Oh, I got eight more minutes in my Zoom call. Uh, do you guys want to hear about something else I found interesting when I was prepping? I, I didn't put it in the quiz because I, I thought we wouldn't have time. But there is an organization that uh, was kind of key uh, during this period, too. Uh, I didn't stick in there, which I probably should have. Uh, they're called the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs. And uh, they were part of the camp as well. They were buying into that uplift uh, ideology, not the uh, accommodation ideology. Um, but they were, so they were, uh, you know, more intellectual. And but in addition to like being a think tank like the ANA, they were like uh, really political, and they were like political organizations and marching and walk rush to and all that. But they're all women, so the men would like kind of ponder things. And the women were, you know, they're getting stuff done. So I'm not kind of interesting. More, more boots on the on the ground. Hmm. Well. <coughs> oh, excuse me.